What is going on guys? It's me, Mojo Jojo Plays, back again with another episode of Total Extreme Wrestling. This is our local to global with South Essex Wrestling Federation. So in the previous episode, we have finally started to make money. We um yeah, so I give it a few months and we might actually be out of the red, which is great because I don't want this company to go under. Um, right. In the previous episode, we crowned our first ever British champion. And it's the main man himself, 34-year-old Vic Walker. He's, um, he's probably our most popular guy, unfortunately. I say that because he's a villain. Also a horn dog, apparently, whatever that means. Yeah. Uh, how many ma good matches has he had? His best match wasn't with us, unfortunately. None of his best matches were with us. All of his worst matches were with us, apart from yeah, they were all they were all uh, with us. Oh no. Anyway, we might need to change the product slightly, but I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So Vic Walker won. A fatal four-way match against Lee Burton, Grant, uh, Gaz Vedmore, and Ripper Lestat in the previous uh, show, which was Gold Rush, our first special event. Since then, we have hired one more person, and I've also taken off the uh, scouting so I can actually see everyone's. That's a bit better. We have. Uh, probably the one of the future guys for this for this company, if he can get a bit better in talking and things like that. This is Andrew Rock. Uh, I I shared a photo of him in the Fantasy Booker's uh, Discord, and somebody instantly was like, "Is this Doctor Death?" <laughs> I think. Hmm. So yeah, I mean I can see it. He's, um, yeah, very good physically, which is great. He'd probably be some guy that just squashes everybody. He is, however, a bit of a troublemaker, which means he's a bit negative backstage. Luckily, today, he hasn't done anything. Because he's going to have his debut match, and we're going to see how bad he actually is. We're going to have our first show today in... Let's go to... Not Norwich. Yeah, we're going to go to Norwich today. Why not? Economy's good. Wrestling industry is tanking hard, unfortunately. But, yeah, we'll... um, We'll soon hopefully get out of that. We're going to start with an angle from our new champion, Vic Walker. I script him. I uh, keep it unscripted. Why not? Uh, Vic Walker basically says that he he is the best in this company, and he won't defend his title today. There's a reason for that because I kind of don't want it to be defended every single show. Might have it like at least once, once an episode. We'll have him defend his title. I'm planning on having like special events every three months. I haven't thought of a name for the new one yet, but by the end of this episode, uh, that will definitely be here. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe like might be money related pay per views because our owner was Leo Price, and our first show was Gold Rush. So yeah, we're going to go with that. We're going to start with Vic Walker. This is going to advance the storyline as well, hopefully. The pillars. He will, however, he is going to fight today because, well, he's on the show. He might as well. He's just not going to defend his title. It's going to be a non-title match. Book the main event first. It's going to be Vic Walker up against... 
Mm. Who can you get? A, who can do a good match with Vic Walker? That isn't a champ. That isn't a contender. We're gonna go with Grant Tapen. I forgot he was injured. That's going to be sorry, 15 minutes. And Vic Walker is going to win. It's going to be a cheap win like he always does. Um, ripped it because none of them are any good yet, I don't think. Actually, is his psychology good? Yes. I think Grant Tapens is as well, actually. No. Well, we're scripting this match then. Um, oh, yes, it's not going to be a title match. Then we're going to have our first match with Andrew Rock versus who's a heel that we can squash. Not squash, but like, just completely and utterly ruined. Um, I don't want to use any of the rookies for this because I don't want the match to be too rated. We're going to go with Miles Cross. Sorry, Miles. You're losing to the new guy. A decisive win. Storytelling, maybe. And then winner will be Andrew Rock. Mars is a bit unhappy and requests that I consider altering it. No. You can you can talk to Andrew Rock about that, Mr. Cross, the six for eight behemoth of a man, if you want to, to get all that changed. And last but not least, we're gonna have a danger mouth angle with Ian Vincible is gonna be his friend in this one. Uh, script both, I think. They're gonna have, um, they're gonna call out the, oh, what's their names? The judo. I'm just gonna call them the judo boys because I forgot their names off the top of my head. Because they've been having a bit of beef with these guys. Invincible. Call out the judo boys. And then one of them's going to have a match. The other in their corner. I'm going to have Ian Invincible in the match because Danger Mouth is not very good. Neither, neither is Ian Invincible, to be honest. But And he is going to have a match with uh, Johnny Leyland because he's not been on the show for a while. Winner is going to be Ian Invincible, but it's going to be an open match. Ripped it. Decisive. Yeah. Right. 58 minutes. Vic Walker Grant Tape and main event. Might not be very good because, once again, injury. But he only has a chronic upper back pain, so that shouldn't be the worst. Right, so let's get right into this. We start with Vic Walker advancing the storyline. He's he's not an awful talker, but he's not the best either by the looks of things. Gets the show off to a good start though, for 25. So he, he comes out and he goes, I am the best, I am the future of British wrestling in, well, of British wrestling, the first ever SCF British heavyweight champion, and if any of you saw the last show, you'll understand why I beat three of the best guys in this company with without really any bother. So if if uh, you saw the last show, basically what happened, um, Gaz Vedmore, I believe, was going to he hit a finisher on Lee Burton. 
Vic Walker came in and basically threw him out of the ring, hit the pinfall, one, two, three, Vic Walker's the champion. So he's saying, yeah, it's so easy, I didn't didn't really have to do anything. And yeah, Vic Walker, everybody, everyone's favourite champion that says, I'm not going to bother defending this title here today because... Frankly, I've I've got a little bit of a bad back, and I don't wanna I don't wanna make excuses for, <laughs> or, well, I don't wanna make excuses really. So he's got a bit of a bad back. I still want he's still gonna fight though because the the owner is making him defend. So he's just yeah he's not gonna defend the title today. That's the gist of it. God, my promos suck. I need more practice. Then we have the debut. Of Andrew Rock. Oh god. He is a street fighter. Legitimate. Where. He can't. Oh my god. But he gets a psychology. Uh, loss. Which isn't great. Can be penalised for losing to a comedy gimmick. Which is not going to happen. To be honest, Let's be honest. Can't be using lengthy angles. Or comedy bouts. Why? So, in a bout that had subpar wrestling and non-existent crowd heat, Andrew Rock defeated Miles Cross in nine minutes. Andrew Rock has a great gimmick. He was holding back and a little bit inexperienced. Doesn't matter. Miles Cross was off his game, probably because he didn't want to do this, but I suppose I can give him a little bribe after and be like, hey, here you go. If I make money, that is. Um, yeah, he won with the the Black Power Bomb. I need to be very um, careful how I say that name. I'm going to probably change that finisher move's name better. But yeah, Andrew Rock, 22 rated. Not bad for his first ever performance. He's definitely a very good technical wrestler compared to the other two rookies. Miles Cross with a 16. Adequate Street Fighter gimmick. Then we have our little freestyle thing where Danger Mouth and the Invincible come out. Danger Mouth is rapping his way to the ring again like he always does. Invincible's just following behind. And yeah, they call out the Judo Boys saying, you need to leave us alone. I mean, just, hmm. They just basically say, they need to leave us alone because focus on other things. We need to focus on better things than them. And, well, he called, basically says, well, why don't we have a match once and for all to just get this over and done with so we can all go our separate ways, which, yeah, that's not, not a bad idea. These guys might have a tag team match on the next show. Oh, who knows? 30 rated segment, not bad. Then we have the match itself, which is uh, Ian Vincible defeated Johnny Leyland with a Pegasus crossbody after 15 minutes. Johnny Leyland and Invincible both got 32. Invincible's got bad stamina, which sucks. And there was no storyline, which sucks. So my plan is I want to move Invincible away from a storyline with Danger Mouth. Because I have other plans for him now. Or at least other plans for Danger Mouth that don't include the Invincible. Then we have the main event. Vic Walker defeated Grant Tapen by disqualification. Oh, I should have picked the uh, actual finish. The cheap win. I I messed that up. I need to practice my booking. Grant Tapen got 39, which is good, because he's a very good worker by the sounds of things. Vic Walker with a 22, mainly because he had a bad back. But on the next show, he won't fight, because I want him to heal a bit. But yeah. Um, Not bad show. Not bad main event. 28 rated show there, however. I think that is our worst one. But we did have Andrew Rock making his debut. So. And an injured Vic Walker. Uh, I will, however, make a little speech. So I'm going to say, good performance. Miles Cross. I'm going to point out as a good example. And Andrew Rock is going to get a hug. Just because I want to make him feel a, a feel a bit better. 
for me basically squashing him. Hopefully he's not too angry. It was a... It's a bat. It's better than you'd expect. Great. Miles Cross. How are you doing? Why are you angry? Yeah, he's just angry at the bookie and that's fine. I'll give him a win uh, sometime down the line. We are now a 5 everywhere, which is great. Popularity is going all the way up. We... Well, we're doing okay. We're getting more merchandise. Which is great. Seven momentum is good. I'm going to change this, these storylines around a bit and add something for Mr. Vincible to do. So yeah. That was this show. We're going to cut forward to the next one, which is in August. And then in September, we're going to have our special show for the episode, which we're going to make a nice event for. Like a nice actual special event. So yeah, see you guys then. Okay. We're back with a, a little bit of news. Uh, long story. I... Well, okay, this is going to take a bit of explaining. For it to make complete sense. So, as you can see here. The performance, well, what we have in the bank. And there is different. There's a reason. So. Um... I had to re recover the save and reload it for one one thing happened. It got to Friday of week four of July, and we got a news article saying that the company had declared bankrupt when they were less than a hundred dollars in debt. So, yeah, it said. And I quote, hang on, I'm just getting the picture up here that I took a screenshot of. SEWF became the latest casualty of the wrestling business last night as they were finally forced to announce their bankruptcy. Reports indicate that they have been bleeding money at a rapid rate for several months and the level, uh, the level of debt reached uncoverable levels last month. So, we actually made enough money to get out of debt last month with the last two days of the month now if they had declared bankruptcy say today fair enough i would have gone with it but because there were two days left in the month and we were going to get back into the out of debt uh i decided i'd really i'd recover the save add to like six hundred dollars so we were out of date and then as soon as the month ended, I took away the $600 again, just so that, you know, the money's what it should have been, and I haven't had to do any other background stuff to fix it. Because really, I'm pretty sure $90 isn't an unrecoverable amount of debt. So, yeah, that's what happened there. Anyway, uh, as for that uh, little update, we are going to go forward a bit up until the next show. Okay, we are back here in Friday, week two of August 2020, and some things are going on. We've got six people that are currently away. I didn't realise that Championship Wrestling from Wigan had a show tonight. So, basically, a lot of my big stars that I was going to plan to use on this show are not here. I guess that's the thing that happens though, we're a, we are the smaller company, so yeah, we'll have to work on that at some point. So unfortunately these guys won't be on the show tonight, I really wanted to use Leighton Buzzard to be honest, but I guess we'll have to use um, someone else instead. Backstage instance, oh no, oh no, this is going to be bad. Colin Piccolo was antagonising Gaz Vedmore so much that a fight broke out and they had to be pulled apart. As his employer, you now have a, a choice of how to deal with Colin Piccolo. Colin Piccolo has the prickly personality and is currently irritated. Gaz Vedmore is a 
class clown personality is currently happy. Okay, I've given him a stern warning. Oh no. Oh, how do I deal with Andrew Rock? Andrew Rock has been spreading rumours about Mr. King, which almost led to a fist fight between the two. As the employer, you now have to choose how to deal with Andrew Rock. Okay, nothing happened. I gave him another stern warning. Nothing happened, though. Andrew Rock, why must you do these things? I know why he must do these things, because he does. Anyway, uh, we'll get right into the show. Storylines, um, I've taken Ripper Lestat out of this because he is awful. Might plan a different thing to do with Ripper, because why not? Right, I'm just going to book a few matches to see who we've actually got that can have a match. That's if on the heel side of things, we have no heels whatsoever. Great. We might have to have a... This is basically going to end up as like a little showcase uh, event, isn't it? By a showcase, I mean like just showing people off, to be honest. Gaz Vedmore versus Strife will be the main event. Right. Gaz Redmore is going to call out Vic Walker. Hopefully I don't have to pay Vic Walker if he's not on screen. Winner is going to be Gaz. It's going to be a scripted. It's going to be decisive. That's all I'm going with. That's the main event. We'll have Mojo make his appearance. Entertainment. Mojo announces the matches. For tonight's showcase event. There we go, we're going with that. Uh, can we do a tag match? Do we have a tag team? I've made a new tag team, by the way. I kind of spoiled them. No, we cannot. I suppose we can if we use the, um, never mind, we can't do either of them. Um, no, nah, no, no tag match. Uh, we will have an angle, however, of a uh, Gaz Vedmore. Walker. Just to make sure this does actually advance the storyline. Alright. That can go there. This is going to be uh, Gaz. Challenges. Vic. For the next. Special. Event. That'll be after the main event. Fair enough. Up next, we're going to have, we might have some rookies on the show today, why not? No, not females. I don't have a female wrestler yet. We're going to have... Hmm. Edward Curran. Go up against... Invincible. About 13 minutes. Invincible is going to be the winner. But we're going to make it an open match. It'll be our storytelling match as well. Script it.
We've got 17 minutes left to kill for this event. Um, who hasn't been on the show for a while? Payne Carlisle? Or... Travis Grove hasn't been on a match for a while. Joanna, Joanna Brooks has never had a match. He needs to be signed somewhere else because... Yes. Find Travis Grove. Any heels that haven't been around for a while. Rohan Kirchner. This will be a good match at least because Rohan Kirchner can actually go. Kirchner is going to win. Be scripted. Uh, decisive. And that's what we're going with. Can you go 10 minutes? I don't care, you're going 10 minutes. And you're also not main eventing, you are actually opening the show. So good luck. Mm, anything else I need to do? It gets a bit longer. So we're going, we're going to start the show now. Uh, booking analysis, fine. Let's just get right into this. We start off with me. Then we have some very three special matches tonight, showcasing the most the up and coming British talent as well as our one of our biggest stars, Gaz Vedmore, going up against Strife. So, pretty good gimmick. Good improvising. Twenty eight rated because my popularity is about two. Then we have. Travis Grove was tiring after 10 minutes. God damn, he needs to get in better shape. And about that, decent wrestling, but very little heat. Rohan Kirchner defeated Travis Grove in 9 minutes and 33 by pinfall with a super kick. Not really the most, um... What's the word? Right, the finishing move for a... For a heel is a super kick. I've now also, I've changed um, Kirchner to a maniac. I didn't see what that said, I have to look after. 33 rated from Kirchner and 9 from Mr. Grove. Up next, we have a 25 rated match. Edward Curran versus Invincible. Uh, what have done here? Poor psychology. Yeah, that's fair. Um, about had decent wrestling, not much heat. Invincible defeats Edward Curran in 13 minutes with a Pegasus crossbody. Was he tired? No, but he was inconsistent and not very happy. So Edward Curran with a 13, Invincible with a 28. And the main event is not very good. Because Leighton Buzzard isn't here, so Gaz Vedmore is going to be the first challenger of the title. About had decent wrestling, but didn't have much great heat. Gaz Vedmore's defeated Strife in 15 minutes with a rolling DDT. Gaz Vedmore has an in-ring performance of 25. Strife, 33. Gaz Vedmore is inexperienced, which sucks. And then we gain heat in the pillar storyline when Gaz challenges Vic for the next special event. But Gaz Vedmore comes out and he goes, Vic, you got so lucky winning that title at Gold Rush. I had that match in the bag and you, you cheated. Well, he did cheat as well. It's weird that a face is saying this, but he said, you cheated, you you threw me out of the ring after after all the rest of us. We put on a great show. You hid the entire time and just threw me out in the end to get the pin. And that's not right. So I'm challenging you to be your first opponent for the British Championship at our next event, High Rollers. Oh, is it high rollers or high stakes? I can't remember. I think I put it as high rollers, then change it to high stakes. That's what I'm going with. Now, high stakes. Good gimmick. Good improvising. High morale. 44 rated segment. Nice. And we finished the show with a 30. So I'm going to give... Um, 
Rohan, he was a uh, praise for good performance. Um, Strife, good performance, and Gaz, good performance. Then uh, hopefully we're not in debt. Hopefully we're not in debt. I mean. Ah. We are making money. Finally, we are not in debt after a show. So, we didn't pay much this month for the show because we used a lot of rookies on the show because everyone else has decided to go and wrestle in Wigan. We'd want to do that. It's Wigan. Anyway. We're finally making money. Which is good because that's what we need. Um, yeah. Um, also, breaking news. Um, I forgot to record this beforehand, but there is a brand new company in the world. It is the European League of Professional Fighters, based in Netherlands. They're basically um, they want to tap into the MMA pop the popularity from MMA, but fuse it with pro wrestling. So they're a serious athletic competition, but with characters, basically. And they've hired everyone that I want to hire, basically. Including, oh, where's, where's the main man here? I'll look at the roster quick to find him. Uh, where's his name? This man right here. This is one that, as soon as we're making good money, I want to bring in this man. He's very good. Uh, with Owen Gupta, or something, his name. They have um they haven't had a show yet. Their first show is in where is it? What month are we in August? Their first show is tomorrow in game. So yeah, we might see how that goes. If not, they might crown a champion. Who knows? But yeah, um we have one more show this episode. It's gonna be high rollers. I changed it from high stakes to high rollers. I knew it was something like that. It's gonna be in London. One and a half hour show, same as Gold Rush was a, for a special event. We might even have a surprise. Who knows? So yeah, we're going to cut forward to that show. And we are back. It is High Rollers, our premiere show for this, for this, um, for this episode, I guess. Um, we are... And out of London, definitely. Select this location. I've already booked the show, I will admit beforehand. But there is a backstage incident I did want to share with you. And it once again has something to do with our boy, Andrew Rock. Andrew Rock was brought <laughs> to, to, before a wrestler's court, accused of moaning about stuff all the time and bumming everyone else out. <laughs> The judge, Leo Price, found him guilty and sentenced him to shut up or cheer up and to buy drinks for everyone after the show. Positive impact on Andrew Rock. That's good. Okay. So, now that we've done that, without further ado, let's get on to the show. We start with a 32 rated segment from Mojo announcing the the Ju the Danger Mouth and the Invincible, they want to fight with the Judo Boys. The Judo Boys no showed the last show because they were somewhere else and decided not to be here. But um, he said, "So we're settling this little feud tonight. Who is going to who who is going to break away from this as the winner? Will it be Danger Mouth and the Invincible, or will it be the Judo Boys, Glenn Ward and Gavin Owen?" Pretty decent way to start the show. Next segment. We have our first ever women's match. Yeah. It's the first ever women's match for this company. It is absolutely horrendous because Joanna Brooks has been here for months and months and months and never had a match. 
and we specifically have hired four women wrestlers just so that she might be able to have matches occasionally. Her gimmick is poor. Great. Fia Brooks is uh, Fia Brooks. Fia Davies, Red Queen is good though. So that's why well, it's great. Brenna Brooks got seven. Fia Davies got thirty-three. A decent match, but non-existent crowd heat. Fia Davies defeated Joanna Brooks in 10 minutes and 3 seconds with a flying elbow drop. And everything that failed was because Joanna Brooks is awful. So, yeah, that's a poor gimmick, unfortunately. Fia Davies, swagger, nothing changed. We might have to change this Amazonian thing or hope that it gets better. Never mind, it's awful, I'm going to change it. Up next, we have an angle where Danger Mouth and Ian Vin Danger Mouth and Glenn Ward basically got it, because they're the two best talkers of their teams before their match. Danger Mouth says, We've been calling you out for w for months, and you finally decided to show up. And Glenn was like, Hey, listen, I've been elsewhere. I've been fighting way more than you have. And, frankly... I don't care about you, but we've got to have this match, so I suppose let's see how it goes. And Ward struggled going off script. Danger Mouth was very good. And then we have the match itself. A 36 rated match. And about that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Owen and Ward have defeated Danger Mouth and the Invincible in 15 minutes and then 10 Seconds when Gavin Owen submitted Ian Vincible with a judo armlock. Ian Vincible got 37, Danger Mouth got 27, Glenn Ward got 35 and Gavin Owen got 34. See what happened here? That's low morale because they haven't been on the show, but that's pretty much it. I'll take that, that's a good segment. Next we have a triple threat match. We're going all out on this show, in case you can't tell. We have Grant Tapen versus Ripper Lestat versus Mr. King. Because they haven't been on the show for a while, those two. I still don't like either of them, but Grant Tapen got the win, so it don't matter. Decent match, Grant Tapen defeated Ripper Lestat and Mr. King when he pinned Ripper Lestat with a single arm DDT. Yeah, both these guys aren't very good. This guy just looks like a budget Tommy Cornell, and this guy is awful, so... Yeah. And then we come into the co-main event, I guess. Once again, no storyline, so that's not great. We have Leighton Buzzard. A guy who's he's probably one of my favourites on the roster. Good wrestling, decent crowd reaction. Leighton Buzzard has defeated Johnny Leyland with a buzz off in 15 minutes. Leighton Buzzard got a 37. Johnny Leyland got 28. Probably because of morale. And low momentum and everything. Yep, yeah, that sounds about right. And then we come into the final segment before the main event. Both of them, they make their entrance. Gaz, uh, Vic Walker comes out second because he's the champion. And Gaz Redmore says to the crowd beforehand that he is going to leave with this title tonight no matter what it takes. And that uh, well, this this company deserves a champion that doesn't cheat or or act away or belittle them, and he's gonna he's gonna be the one to do that. Vic Walker then makes his entrance, basically calls the good people of London awful, and says that there's nothing they can do about it. I'm gonna be the champion for a long time, and Gaz, you're you're not on my level. So, we get to the main event. It is a 31. In a decent match, Vic Walker has defeated Gaz Vedmore. Using a foreign object this time, Vic Walker makes defence number one of the SEWF British title. So how this match ended, there's a ref bump, because there always is a ref bump. And Gaz Vedmore... He doesn't. He he gets the pin whilst the ref is knocked out. Well, he he gets a pin long enough whilst the ref is knocked out, and whilst he he gets up back to his feet to try and 
make the re- wake the ref up. Ref doesn't wake up. He's knocked out. And whilst he's trying to wake up the ref, Vic Walker goes out the ring and grabs the title belt and smashes Gaz over the head with it. The ref slowly stirs, like they always do, and Vic Walker gets the pin. He makes defence number one. Vic Walker got 30, Gaz Vedmore got 29. Pretty decent match. Gaz Vedmore is inexperienced, unfortunately, but the match was good. We have a 32 rated show. I am going to give Grant Tapen one of these. Uh, compliment a great perfor- Praise for a great performance. Um, Vic Walker, I suppose I'll give something to him. Um, point out as a good example, and then Joanna, where are you? Making your debut, you can have a hug. So yeah, we've got 32 rated show. Get to end this episode of, of shows at least. We're going to cut forward now until October. Just to get to the end of the month. We probably lost a bit of money on that show. I'll be yeah, $220 we're down this month, but that will soon pick up. Also, we are um, upgrading our merchandise. That's something I was told that we should do. Sponsors were good, merchandise was okay. How many people were at that show is the question. 93. Ooh. That's the wrestling industry that's killing us now, because we should... We're, we've gone from 58 or 60 to 37 in less than a year, and now the economy is falling as well. Oh no. We're in a lot of trouble if this doesn't pick back up. So yeah, we're going to cut forward now to the end of the month, see how everyone's doing, and yeah, we'll see you guys then. And here we are, Monday, week 1 of October 2020. And we're going to have a, just a little brief rundown of all the guys, all, all the wrestlers, seeing how, how, you know, how they are evolving as time goes by. First things first, we need to look at the size though. We are now 7. So we have, uh, over the last, God, God knows how long, like 7 months, we've gone from 0 to, no, 9 months, we've gone from 0 to 7. So that's not too bad. Once we get to 17, we become tiny, which is good. We're starting to make real money now, which is even better. And, yeah. Before we get into the roster, though, there is some news to be seen. First of all, there's um these guys here. They have their first two champions. Their number one contender, Christopher Lister. And they have the big gold belt, which is Scott Vandenberg. I don't know how I feel about this. They are just about gaining money. We're somehow making more money than them, though, but they started with 35k. Um, Where is it? Here we are. So, those that play the C-verse, well, you know what this is. Those that don't, let me explain. This is WrestleWorld. WrestleWorld is a broadcaster that started in March for American and Canadians where small independent companies can well they can they can basically show TV shows wherever they want or they can stream their shows everywhere so let me just quickly show you that that is here we go here we have WrestleWorld so it is in America and Canada launched in March so as you can see it's very small coverage but it's at least coverage you can get your popularity around the world around America and Canada a bit easier so we have the British version is now a thing and the Mexican version is now a thing as well so we can't sign this yet unfortunately because we need to be tiny we need 25 popularity in one region, apparently. Oh. And we need to upgrade everything. So, it needs to be at least tiny sized. Must be based in Britain. Must have at least 25 popularity in one region. 
must have semi-pro production values, hired pro broadcast quality, and in-house music. Because obviously it's been streamed, they don't want to get sued. But yeah, that's the thing. So as soon as we can afford that, we will do that. Because that sounds fun to me. Anyway, we're going to look into the roster, see how people's skills are coming along. So his brawling's gone up, which is great. Technical staying the same. Looking okay. His physical health is dropping. Popularity, he's now a two. He's had two matches and won both of them, I believe. Uh, match history. No, he's had one match and won it. Okay. And we have a new sign in Blair Kerrigan, who hasn't had a match yet, so we won't look at her. Kane Carlisle, he's irritated because he's not really been around, but he is very good wrestler still. Match history, he hasn't had one since um, when's June. So he needs to get on the show soon. Popularity, how's he doing? Oh, well, he's going up, which is good. So he's up to a 17. Colin Piccolo, I don't think I like this guy as much as I should. He's up to a 7. Match history. He's probably been on a few indie shows. Yeah. He's been on some indie shows and he's in uh, Scottish promotions as well, which is good. Danger Mouth, how are you doing, my friend? So he's gone from 24 to 16. But he's dropping rapidly, which means we need to build him back up. Edward Curran, he's up to a 6. He's not won anything, but he's a, a rookie, so he's not supposed to win stuff. He has wrestled an independent match in August, though, against Hellraiser, where he done a 90, when he done a 13. Not too bad. He's lost every single match he's ever been in. Gavin Owen, popularity should be increasing, which it is. Great. I like Gavin Owen. Gavin Owen and Glenn Ward are probably my favourite tag team. Gaz Vedmore, how are you doing? He's gone, since he's been here, he's gone from a 3 to a 12, so I'll take that. Skills aren't really developing that much, but what can you do? Glenn Ward, his popularity, I think, might have dropped, actually. No, he's been an 11 to 13 the entire time. So, yeah, they, the judo boys, as I like to call them, are, um, yeah, they're doing, they're doing pretty well. Next, we have Grant Tapen. Popularity has gone from a 6 to a 14. But he's doing very well. Uh, skills are developing nicely as well, I believe. Not really, but he's 30, so... Still doing well. What have I done? Humphrey Woolsey, he's our referee. Invincible. He might have dropped. Nope, he's going up as well. He's gone to a 10 popularity. He has dropped since September after the loss to the Judo Boys. Still a very good worker that we need to keep around. Joanna Brooks is a 2 after having one match. He's not wrestled any indie shows at all. Johnny Leyland, he's definitely dropping, but not too fussed. He's going up and down from 9 to 10 in the south. That's all I'm looking at is the south of England, because that's all we're in. Leighton Buzzard, he has gone from a 6 to a 13 in the 9 months we've been open, which is good, good for him. Leo Price, he's the owner, he hasn't been used at all. Mickey Robson... He hasn't really been in much. His popularity is kind of varying from a 6 to a 7. Mr. King, not the biggest fan of this guy, I'll be honest. Popularity has stayed at 11 the entire time because he's not really done anything. He's done a lot with, um, S with the Scottish National promotion. Only on the pre-shows though, so it doesn't matter. God damn it. There's me. I now have one popularity. Nice. Miles Cross, I think he's dropped. Yeah, he's dropped from a 4 to a 3. He needs to start winning more, because I quite like Miles Cross. It's just... I needed somebody for Andrew Rock to squash. Rebel stat. I don't like this guy at all. But I'm going to keep him around. Just for now. He's gone up to a 12. Because he can still be somewhat useful. Rohan Kirchner. 
I do like Rohan Kirch. Now I might he's in a tag team that I've made called uh, Trouble and Strife with with Strife, who we'll see in a minute. He's gone from five to a seven. Then we have Strife, who he's doing okay. He's a good wrestler, good technically, good uh, flashiness and aerial stuff. He's gone from a six to a five, so that's gonna change. I do have plans for these guys. And we have Fear Davies. She's a, up to a two. She's had one match. Travis Grove. He is now a three. Has he had any indie matches? No, he hasn't. He's only lost twice to the same guy. Oops. Then we have Vic Walker, the main man himself. His popularity is probably just going up. He's gone from a nine to a sixteen in the nine months he's been here. He's our British champion after all. And then we have Sofia Jankovic, another new sign-in, not really done anything yet, but she it looks very, very good. But yeah. Um what else can I look at quick? Storylines, these will all be changing, so it doesn't really matter. Uh Danger, this is all changing. Invincible can come out of it now, just so I remember. And then you can come out and so can you. I have plans for Danger Mouth. It involves somebody else being in a team with him, potentially. Speaking of teams, we have four of them. We have Trouble and Strife here. Uh, Rohan Kirchner and Strife, obviously, they're both heels. Then we have The Bridges of London. This is Grant Tapin and Leighton Buzzard. They are two best workers in the company, to be honest. And I'm frankly, I need to do more of them, both of them. Owen and Ward, probably my second best performing team at least. Both of them are very good technically. Then we have the Black Country Boys of Gaz Vedmore and Mickey Robson. I need to do more with the tag teams in this company. Hint, hint. Anyway. We have four guys. Four tag teams. Uh, what else can I go through? We are, as I've said, we're up We're up in our merchandise. 50% done, which is great. We go, hopefully, up to a level 2, which I'm not sure what it is. But it will be better. So, yeah. That, I think, is going to be it for this episode. And I hope you have all enjoyed. We are slowly moving up in the wrestling world. We will look at this one last time just before. The economy is falling. The wrestling industry is falling. Oh God, we might be in trouble. Let's see how the other countries are doing. Not as, We're not as bad as America. Canada is a very good wrestling industry and rubbish economy. The other way round for Mexico. Uh, Japan, both rising, which is good because they're putting on great shows out there as well. Europe, they have a new company, and the rest of the industry is still falling. And Australia, oh my god, what's happened to Australia? And there's nobody in India, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, that is going to be it. Unless, you know what, never mind. We're just going to go through this quick. Franchise players, the main five guys. We've got Vic Walker, who's our champion. Danger Mouth, who is probably, our, yeah, he's our biggest star. He's, our, he's the rhyme artist as well. We've got Kane Carlisle. Pretty decent. Gavin Owen and Grant Tapin are our top five guys, apparently. Interesting. Next big things, we have nobody. Top prospects, we have the entire women's roster and Andrew Rock. Talk to talk, that is Gaz Vedmore, Danger Mouth, and me. So these are our best talkers in the company. Joe Stoppers. Fear Davies and Sophia Yankovic are up there, which is great. Rohan Kirchner. Johnny Leyland and Vic Walker. They're our five best performers, apparently. Ring Generals, we have the same five. The same four plus Leighton Buzzard. Who's hot? Gavin Owens doing good. Vic Walker is great. Grant Tapin is great. Is good. Invincible is decent. Ribblestat is decent. Who's not? Danger Mouth. His momentum is in the toilet. So is Johnny Leyland's. Edward Curran's doing awful, so is Mickey Robson and Strife. And Hidden Gems. Bue Boulder is here. He is once again 
He's been released from 21st Century Wrestling. He's a guy I do like, as well with um, Darren Flynn as well. They're also a tag team. So yeah, in the next episodes, we will go up to the end of the year, which will end with um, SEWF Endpoint. So yeah, we might have something pretty big planned for that event. Who knows? I don't. Anyway, <laughs> for real this time, hope you have enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.